Matthew Morris, MM Wood Studio, the camera's in front of me, the rocking chair's next to me, and that means it's time for another weekly shop update. So what has been going on this week? Well, actually a whole lot. It may look like there's not been much because the rocking chair is pretty much in the same spot it was last week. And um, it doesn't look like there's a whole bunch of new stuff that's been done because the arms aren't done yet and the panels aren't here. But there's actually been a lot of work I've been accomplishing this week. And let me walk you through it. So first off, I got back onto the crest rail. Now, last week I had just finished shaping the crest rail to a rough shape and I really like the shape but after taking a look at the two chairs I have in my house I have the living room armchair I built from last year for the build video and the first prototype of that chair I'd ever built um, many a number of years ago I'm, I don't even know how many now three uh, I'm not sure but that was inside the house as well and I looked at the crest rails from both of them and I really really liked the approach I did on the crest rail for the build last year and that's what I worked to here. So the crest rail on the build had a much thinner top than what I had uh, rough shaped everything too. So what I did was I spent some time this week with the spoke shape and um, I continued to refine the shape by um, coming back even deeper into the top part and uh, making the, the, where the top, where the, fr the front part and the back meet much thinner. Maybe at the most it's an eighth of an inch and then round it over, it looks even thinner than an eighth, an eighth of an inch up there. And um, that's all around, that's all along the entire um, curve of the back as well. So that was a really a lot of fun. I was really happy with that. And I finished sanding this piece as well. Now when I was finished sanding this, I also shot a quick tip. So if you guys haven't seen that quick tip, you should check it out. It's about sanding curves. And um, check it out because I have some great stuff about using a sanding pad and how you can keep from sanding something as very curved like this, or even something that has a little bit less curves from getting those flat spots when you use a random orbital sander. Now once I got this guy done, I moved down the back and I focused on the center back slat. The reason why I'm kind of focusing on the back right here is that um, I want to get this stuff done before I start doing uh, my house mortise and tenon joints. I need to do house mortise and tenon joints on this chair because the decision I made here in the rear legs and that was that like the original chair where the rail meets the rear leg will not be flat, it's curved. Um, so before I move on to getting the arms uh, fitted and the panels put in, those distances, they're all going to change when I do the house mortise and tenon joints. So I really wanted to say, let's focus on the back, get the back part done, and then I'm going to start my house mortise and tenon joints there. So in order to do that, I needed the crest rail finish. And um, since I was here, I really wanted to finish the center back slat as well. Um, so that's kind of the whole thinking behind all of that. What I did in so far with the center back slat is I got the ebony bars in both the front and the back. So let me tell you about that process. So first off, I grabbed some ebony in the shop. So I cleaned the wax off of the ebony. Ebony ships with wax around it and that wax is to help prevent it from checking. And I surface plane one side and then got one edge square to that surface. And then I use a table saw to help me square up the rest of it. Um, I use a table saw since I'm not removing a lot of material here. I was able to take that jointed edge and that flat face to the table saw and then rip um, a width that I wanted. So I ripped the whole strip and then I was able to take that width and then rip, turn that over and then rip again a fourth face. So then I created the rest of the bars and these bars vary in their heights and their lengths. So I had to um, cut the two bars out first on the bottom and then make the bar, the rough blank for the bars, thinner as far as the height is concerned. And then I cut the middle bar out and then the top bar out after that. 
Now, the next thing I needed to do was to clean these guys up over at the bench and get them prepped and ready for me to drill holes in. Now, if you ever gotten any of my plans before, you know they're very detailed and this is no exception here. I have a drilling guides that you print out on your printer and then you can, I use tape, so some blue tape to adhere them to my pieces and then take them over to the drill press and with the crosshairs, I line up a brad point bit and then I just drill in and I have a perfect 1 8 inch hole and that 1 8 inch hole has been drilled in to allow for this guy to go in. So I got my silver, I ordered, that's 1.28 ounces of silver, I ordered a foot and a half. This is a foot and a half of silver which equals out to 1.28 ounces. So I ordered my silver from a site uh, named Rio Grande. So this silver comes from them. I'll have a link in the description for you guys so you can head over there and check out their stuff. I buy stuff from them for all of my inlays when I'm doing metal. So I will um, get round stock for holes like this. When I did the little table, I used the square stock for the inlays on the breadboard ends. They have rectangular stock. Um, they have stuff in silver, gold, platinum, copper, um, tons of options there. Brass, you can buy brass from there. That's where I will buy brass when I use brass in my pieces as well. So great resource to have. After drilling these holes, I headed over to the bandsaw and ripped the bars in half. Now I needed to rip the bars in half because instead of trying to fit the whole bar in here, which honestly is just asking way too much, I fit the bars in the front and then the bars in the back. To start off the whole process, I cut some spaces, spacers over at the table saw and I put a center line on those guys matched up to the center line here on the rear stretcher and um, I'm able to lay everything out very nicely with a marking knife and then grab a my little spall router with an eighth inch bit, remove the waste and then chisel back and get all these guys in from bottom to top. Before I put them in and glue them in, um, before I glued them in, I did make sure to sand the ebony up to 320. It's actually gonna go a little bit higher, but I only did up to 320 when I put them in. Um, it will get up to 600 and then buffed out as well. But that's another step right before I put the silver in. So there's a couple of steps going on there. After I did the front, I finished for the day and came back and today I finished the back bar. So literally like a half hour or so ago, I finished putting the last piece of the back bar in. And of course, before I did all that work, I forgot to say that I sanded the piece as well because coming back and trying to sand this afterwards, at least this section of it, is an enormous hassle. Otherwise, in rocking chair news, um, I do have chapters three through seven now up on my site. So if you have a yearly subscription, guys, you can now watch chapters three through seven. That now chapter two is not up yet. I'm, I'm actually gonna go backwards and get that one finished up here uh, very soon. And I look for that either later this week or over the weekend, but definitely by the next shop update. Now, speaking of the website um, and all that fun stuff, kind of leading into what Matt and I just put up today, which is the latest episode of the Matt Matthew Show, episode 11, where Dima joined us and we talked about Instagram for woodworkers and we touched a little bit on a couple of other social medias and, um, and just barely touched on Etsy. Um, but it's a really great episode. That brings me back to what I'm gonna say now, which is, hey, if you guys haven't already, hop over to my site, mmwoodstudio.com, sign up for the newsletter. And at the end of this, I have a new card which has all my social media links That'll jump you off to Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, everything else I have. So if you haven't given me a follow or like before, I'd really appreciate it if you would do it now. I'll really keep you guys in the, the know-how or know or in between, you know, seeing the weekly shop updates, you can see the pictures I'm putting up. I'm really appreciative of everybody watching. Thank you so much. Um, comments are great. I, those are fantastic. And as always, please subscribe to the channel. So until next time, I hope you guys have a great week in the shop.